I have a lot of fun working on vehicles, except for one thing, and that's dealing with rust, especially frozen fasteners. Have you ever had an exhaust manifold stud break off, leading to a much bigger process? Well, it'd be nice if you could prevent that. So the question is, which penetrating oil is the best? Now, we've tested each one of these products in previous episodes. Each one won its own respective competition. So let's get the testing underway and see which one is the best. In the first test, we're gonna see how well these penetrating oils do at removing rusty lug nuts after one hour, and then again after exposure to the penetrating oil for 24 hours. We're gonna see which one of these products climbs a vertical surface the best. Penetrating oils are also designed to prevent corrosion or rust. We're gonna see which one of these products works the best. Film strength for penetrating oils is very important because once the nut or bolt is free, you wanna make sure that it doesn't experience galling. So we're gonna test film strength. We'll see which one of these penetrating oils works best with heat. This test setup started off with brand new wheel stud lugs and lug nuts, which were exposed to muriatic acid to remove all the zinc coating. A hydrogen peroxide vinegar and salt mix was applied to each one of the lug nuts 50 to 60 times over the course of three months. This test setup was also left out in the weather to experience as much rust as possible. Before applying penetrating oils, we'll first test several bolts without the use of penetrating oil. The first nut required 184.9 foot-pounds to unseize the frozen nut. The second required 162.8. The third required 154.1. Now that we've established our control, let's apply the penetrating oils to the bolts. Liquid Wrench provides optimal penetration, fast-acting anti-seize formula, dissolves rust and cuts through grease, reduces friction, and prevents wear. I'll apply 10 drops of each penetrating oil on each one of these nuts, and we'll give it one hour before we come back and test them. Seafoam Deep Creep is a multi-use penetrating lubricant. Deep Creep immediately begins to creep into otherwise unreachable places. Deep Creep frees rusted and sticky parts. Deep Creep will work very well with heated parts and will not dissipate. Gibbs is a mega penetrant, ultra lubricant, corrosion inhibitor, water repellent, and metal protector. We're gonna go ahead and apply the penetrating oil to the next set of bolts. We'll come back in 24 hours to test these. While we're waiting on the penetrating oils to do their job over the next hour, let's move on to the next test. In the next test, we're gonna measure the ability of these products to prevent corrosion. I'll apply a generous dose of each penetrating oil on each metal strip, and then we'll begin applying a hydrogen peroxide vinegar and salt mix several times over the next 24 hours to see how much corrosion occurs. This is our control. I won't apply anything and we'll see how much rusting occurs. Wow, the rusting has already started on our control and it's only been about 10 seconds. We'll check back on this later in the video. Once a rusty fastener is broken free, the penetrating oil needs to be able to provide enough lubrication to allow the rusty fastener to move without galling the threads. The lubricity test will provide some great information on film strength or the ability of these products to prevent friction or metal on metal contact. 30 milliliters of each product will be added into the test cup and each test will last right at 60 seconds. At the end of the test, the size of the wear scars will be compared. We'll also watch the amount of watts for the test device. If a product provides superior lubrication, the amount of watts required will be lower compared to products that don't have as much film strength. Seafoam in the middle did far better than Liquid Wrench to the left as well as Gibbs to the right. Liquid Wrench came in second and Gibbs came in third. After only two coats of the hydrogen peroxide vinegar and salt mix, there is a lot of corrosion on this steel. Look at our control. Coming in first place is Seafoam. Next up is Liquid Wrench. Third place is Gibbs. We'll give it a few more hours and come back to this again later in the video. It's been right at one hour since the penetrating oils were applied. So let's begin the testing beginning with Liquid Wrench. The first bolt broke free at 151.9. The second bolt required 147.5.
The third broke free at 143. The fourth needed 155.2. The first broke free at 170.9. The second needed 162.3. The third required 166.3. The fourth needed 145.2. So Liquid Wrench actually did a little bit better than Seafoam. The first needed 142. The second required 150.7. The third took 132.2. The fourth broke free at 157. So Gibbs beat both Liquid Wrench and Seafoam. So after one hour, Gibbs came in first place, Liquid Wrench second, and Seafoam third. Will allowing penetrating oils 24 hours help reduce the amount of force required to break loose the rusted nuts? Will Gibbs hold on to the first place position after 24 hours? We'll find out later in the video. In a lot of repair applications, you'll need a penetrating oil that can actually climb a vertical surface. If it can't climb a vertical surface, then it's just not going to be able to get the job done. We'll be placing landscape spikes into the water as well as the three penetrating oils to see how quickly they can climb this vertical surface. Okay, it's been about three hours. It looks like Liquid Rinse is almost caught up with sea foam and Gibbs is very close as well. So all three of these products do a great job at creeping up vertical surfaces. Gibbs is on the left, Seafoam is in the middle, and Liquid Wrench is on the right. You can see that Seafoam clearly won first place. So now let's compare Liquid Wrench and Gibbs to see which one came in second. Well, wow, it's very close with Liquid Wrench barely beating out Gibbs. In some instances, heat has to be used in order to break loose a rusted fastener. Also, if you can use a penetrating oil with heat, it's very helpful. So which one of these products can actually take the heat? Instead of creating a glowing red hot nut that will cause all the products to auto ignite, we'll only be applying heat up to around 600 degrees Fahrenheit, then applying a flame just to see how flammable each of these products are. Okay, the nuts at 600 degrees Fahrenheit, we're gonna try liquid ranch. Okay, we've got a liquid wrench candle. Back down to around 600 degrees Fahrenheit, so we're gonna try this again with sea foam. Okay, the sea foam doesn't stay lit like the liquid wrench does, so sea foam seems to be a little bit better with tolerating the heat. Okay, the nuts down to around 600 degrees again, so we're gonna go ahead and use the Gibbs. Okay, Gibbs is highly flammable as you can see. This stuff really burns. Seems like Seafoam's the best, then Liquid Wrench, and then Gibbs as far as tolerating the heat. While Seafoam did ignite, Seafoam also went out pretty quickly. Liquid Wrench just didn't seem to be quite as flammable as Gibbs. Gibbs really took off once the flame was applied. All three products beat our control. You can see that corrosion has covered the entire surface. There isn't a single space that I can see that doesn't have rust on it. In my opinion, Gibbs came in third place. You can see rust has fairly thoroughly coated the entire piece of metal and some fairly deep rust has taken place place, but it still beat the control. Seafoam and Liquid Wrench are fairly close. There looks to be a little bit more rusting with Liquid Wrench, and the rusting seems to be a little bit deeper into the metal. It's been right at 24 hours since the penetrating oils were applied. They were applied a total of three times. So let's get the testing underway to see if the extra time helps these penetrating oils do a better job. The first bolt broke free at 142.4. The second bolt broke free at 134.4. The third required 137.1. The fourth needed 149.3. The first bolt broke free at 136.7. The second needed 125.3. The third required 144.2. The fourth needed 159.8. So Liquid Wrench did beat Seafoam, but by less than one foot pound. The first needed 152.8. The second required 109.4. The third required 128. The fourth broke free at 148. So Gibbs once again beat both Liquid Wrench and Seafoam. 
the blue bar shows the average foot pounds required at one hour and the orange bar at 24 hours. When it comes to breaking free frozen nuts and bolts, Gibbs came in first both times, Liquid Wrench came in second both times, and finally Seafoam finished just barely behind Liquid Wrench. In many instances, you probably don't have 24 hours to wait to make a repair, but if you do, time really helps. In fact, all the penetrating oils showed improvement in performance from the extra 23 hours of time. Obviously, price is a factor to consider when purchasing a product. Liquid Wrench is by far the least expensive product, then Seafoam, and finally Gibbs. There are quite a few factors to consider when buying penetrating oils, and parts of this assessment are highly subjective. Gibbs seems to have the best capability for penetrating the rust, but its ability to penetrate rust seems to hurt it in other categories. Liquid Wrench wasn't quite as good at penetrating the rust, but seemed to be slightly better than Gibbs at corrosion resistance, film strength, flammability, and vertical surface climb. While Seafoam finished in third as far as unseizing the rusty bolts, it seemed to beat the other two brands in all the other categories. I'm very impressed with each one of these products. One thing that all of them have in common though is that time makes a huge difference regarding how effective they are. Allowing 24 hours for these products to do their job makes a huge difference. Obviously, not everyone has 24 hours. And the main benefit of a penetrating oil, at least in my opinion, is if you don't have 24 hours, once that nut or that bolt does break free, providing that lubrication to get the nut or the bolt all the way out is where the payoff is at. That alone could prevent breaking off a stud or galling the threads. As you know, all my video ideas come from viewers, so please keep those ideas coming and I'll keep making videos. Please take care and I look forward to next time.